Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 152nd Open at Royal Troon. It's a delight to see you all back here again, and it is even more delightful to be joined uh, by Brian Harmon, of course, our uh, champion of the golf, champion golfer of the year from last year. Brian, you have just had to return the claret jug. Was it a sad moment to have to hand that one back? It's uh, it's been a great year. Uh, yeah, a little sad to give it back. It's uh, but I'll remember everywhere it's been forever. And and um, yeah, I'm I'm happy to give it back. Happy to be here. Ready to get going. Ladies and gentlemen, just a bit of housewarming. If you would like to ask a question, please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. Brian, can you just reflect on the past 12 months and, and what it's meant to you to be the champion golfer of the year? Yeah, any time that you become a, a major champion, it certainly elevates your status in the game, elevates the way that you're perceived in the game. And I've tried to take all that in stride, but at the same time, understand that, um, you know, the golf is the most important thing. And I've tried to improve my golf game and and uh, get it in a place to where I can maybe contend in some more majors down the road. Just while we wait for the mi microphones just to get here to Brian, please. Hi, Brian, good to see you once again. When we chatted a, a few weeks ago, you said you hadn't been here yet and you were asking for some tips. What do you make of the bunkers here? And secondly, if you don't mind me asking, your fellow lefty had a decent day yesterday. Bob, what was your take on his victory? Yeah, so I still haven't seen the bunkers. I'm going to go play this afternoon. It'll be my first look at it. Uh, really excited to get out. Got some nice weather today. Uh, yeah, uh, Bob and I have, have become friends. Um, he's a he's a excellent, excellent player. And um, it was a really cool finish yesterday. I was really happy for him. Number two over here, please. Uh, Brian, um, I, hear, I hear a lot of players talking about windows this week. Um, and I'm just wondering like how you make sense of them, why it's so important during a week like this and, and why they're so important for you guys, I guess. W windows in what regard? Like the way that they're flighting their golf ball? Yeah, like hitting certain windows that they're looking at. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably one of the most important things when you're playing Lynx golf is being able to hit a, be able to hit a piercing golf shot that stays underneath the wind and, and being able to work the ball against the wind whichever way it's blowing. A lot of times, if you let a ball kind of go with the wind, it, it has trouble stopping going that way. So, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's the rub of the Open Championship and Lynx golf in general. You've got to control the trajectory in your golf ball. And that's what makes this my favorite major to play in because that's still a, a skill that I think is very important and sometimes gets lost um, at some other places. John in the middle here, please. Brian, did you go through the procedure with uh, Martin Slumbers of uh, being filmed as you arrived and handing the trophy back to him and all that? Uh, I practiced getting out of the car one time. That you, was. <laughs> they were, and are you good at it? I, I, I don't know. I'll have to go back and watch the tape and see how, see how I did. I, yeah, I, it's, I, um, yeah, just, you know, I wish, wish Martin all the best in his retirement. I think he's done a fantastic job. and. Hope he spends his time getting to do all the stuff he, he really likes to do. And what do you think of that sort of um, thing? I mean, do you do that? Uh, does that strike you as a quintessentially British thing to do, to, to be filmed handing the trophy over? Or? Well, in my opinion, it's the coolest trophy in all of sports. So I think it's deserving of all of the pageantry that is involved with it. Number two, just behind John there. Uh, hi, Brian. You talked about it there a bit, the, the mentality change of, of being an open champion, a major champion. How do, does that bring more pressure coming into a week like this, or does it make you kind of puff your chest out a bit? No, it, it doesn't. I mean, I think it would probably add a little bit of pressure, but I don't think you ever really know what you're capable of until something like that happens. And so at least now I know that, it, you know, if things go my way and I'm well prepared that, you know, I'm a, I'm a tough guy to beat. And... And if I just prepare the proper way, then take care of what I can do, then I'll give myself the best opportunity to have another chance. Martin, please. Brian, you talked about becoming friends with Bob. Did that come about firstly because you were left-handers? And, and Bob talked a couple of months back about the, the difficulty of you know, adjusting to PGA to your life. Can you understand someone from the UK or outside America coming there and taking time to, to sort of adjust to life and, and everything that's different over there? Yeah, I, I chatted with him. Um, forget exactly where he's living. I think he's down in Orlando. 
And uh, I think they're ha they were having a little bit of trouble kind of adjusting. It's It's got to be. I can't imagine how hard that is to, to uproot and go go somewhere else and then, and then base out of there. So he certainly had a tough uh, a tough go of it as far as you know adjusting. But but he's played fantastic and and I think he's I mean obviously his game speaks for itself. He's doing great. I mean I know <laughs> you know at the end of the struggle is usually something really cool. So I, I think he's doing fantastic. Hi Brian, um, Podrick Harrington is the last player to successfully defend an open in. 2007-2008. Um, obviously, it's difficult to defend any Open, but how do you, or sorry, any Major, how do you feel your game is in shape to hopefully try and emulate what, he, what Podrick achieved? Yeah, the, my, my stats this year have been really good. My ball striking's been as good as it's ever been. Um, the only thing I haven't done great this year, I haven't, I haven't putted especially well. So I'm just kind of waiting for it all to, to, to line up correctly. You can... You can work and work and work. You just never know when that work's going to pay off. You never know when the peak's coming. You never know when you're going to, you know, catch a catch a little bit of momentum. So you just have to hope that it's a, a big week. You just you never really know when it's coming. And you know, I'll, like I said, I've I've worked really hard and my game's in really good shape. So I'm I'm, I'm happy with where I'm going into this week. Mike, two, please. Uh, Brian, just a little bit further down the road. Obviously, you'll have your eyes on the on the Ryder Cup team. Uh, what did you make of Keegan Bradley being made the uh, team captain for the USA? Yeah, I think I shared everyone's surprise um, that that he was named. But as far as tenacity, and you know, I don't know if anyone loves the Ryder Cup as much as Keegan does. And I think he'll be a fantastic captain. Um, you know, the the players are going to mirror the 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 I don't want to say morale, but the the enthusiasm of their captain, and he won't be lacking for for any in that regard. I think I think he'll do great. And just just being a bit of a younger guy as as a captain, do you think that makes it easier for him to maybe? resonate with you guys, resonate with the team, sort of drive things in that team room? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I've only played one. I thought Zach, I thought Zach, as far as relating with players, did a, a really good job. And you always have this, this um, respect for a guy that's done it a bunch of times. And Keegan's played plenty of Ryder Cups, so I think he's a little bit of both. He's, you know, he's younger and he'll relate a little bit better. And then he's also got the experience to go along with it. Just in the middle, please. Ryan, what's something you didn't expect over the course of this past year as Open champion? Hmm. That's a good question. Not that I, not that I expect. I mean, all, all of it's been unexpected. You never know. You never know how it's 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 going to go. But um, I think just the reception from everyone back home and like the reception back home was was overwhelming, like how positive. Not, not that no, they weren't, just how excited everyone was. Like, I was obviously very excited, but to, to be able to share that excitement with people that I care about was, was probably the best. Did you drink anything unusual out uh, of it or um, damage it in any way? Out of any I drank some it? unusually expensive wine and some unusually exceptional bourbon out of it. Alex, please. Yeah, Brian, uh, they just released the uh, purse for this year, and it's gone up about a half a million dollars. And in the release, uh, Martin Slumbers talked about the fact that this is probably not sustainable to keep going this route. The question to you is, is, would you play this tournament if you got paid less or maybe nothing at all? Yeah, I would, personally. I'm not sure everyone would, but I would. And, and why do you think others may not? Because some people care more about money than I do, I suppose. I, um, I, I play golf to, for, I, I play golf for me. Like I play golf to see how good I can get at golf. And I play golf because I enjoy torturing myself with things that are really hard to do. And that's just, that's just me. And most, most times when I get done with a tournament, I couldn't tell you within commas of how much that I've made that week. Number two here, please. Uh, Brian, um, when we spoke to you, um, on the, on the final day at Hoy Lake last year, you were talking about um, going back home and driving your tractor to, to reflect. I was just wondering, in that time afterwards, what was the moment when it really dawned that you, you were the Open champion and, and everything of the world when it had passed? When did it sort of start settling in? Um, I, had, I, had one, I had one day. I was, I was at my farm, and it's wintertime. And I'm riding my four wheeler, and I just, I just kind of like had a moment. It's just me. It's it's cold, 
and it was just like, like I, I like I was so happy that I was there. Yeah. And then I was like, and it just it's like this is just really nice. It's nice to be the open champion and still be doing the same thing that I would have been doing yeah. otherwise. Because that that was kind of what you um implied to us that night that you just wanted to go back and be away from everything and just let everything sink in. So was this like a few months later like Yeah, it's it it's nice being in a place where no one no one's there, no one knows who you are, no one can get in touch with you. It's just as as golfers, we spend so much time playing in front of people. I think a lot of us kind of crave going to a place where there's no one yeah. watching. There's nothing. There's you just you're just there. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 no it's somewhere way. to disappear. Somewhere yeah. to disappear and to, and to like really enjoy time as a you know. Yeah. And but it's also having that thing in the back of your mind that you you know what you've achieved that moment in history and nobody will take it away from you. It's nice being able to reflect on all of that and always have pleasant, pleasant memories to, to think about. John. Brian, you had a really, a fairly rough time um, at, at the hands of some spectators last year. In that last round, you were very open about it then and you repeated it uh, in a Golf Digest piece. Have you had uh, a, what you might call a warmer welcome this time and do you anticipate uh, that things will be uh, more kind towards you or however you want to describe it this year? I'm just, or doesn't it bother you? Uh, it doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm ready to take whatever in, in stride. You know, I'm, I'm here to, I'm here to play the best golf that I possibly can, and that's that's my main focus. Um, uh, I've I've always loved the fans over here. I've always I've spoken a bunch of times about how I find them the most knowledgeable fans of any that we play in front of. Um, so I, I kind of chalked last year up as sort of more of an anomaly than than anything else. In the front, please. Hey, Brian, I just wonder, um, with your experiences of winning prior, what does it feel like coming here as a past champion versus other places? And is there a level of pressure maybe that you have on yourself because this is such a huge championship to do it again or yeah, the, farewell? The, the pressure I feel is always from internally, just trying to, to have my game in as good a shape as I possibly can. As far as being a, a defending champion, yeah, I mean, being a – a defending, I can't speak for the other majors, but there's there's lots of stuff you have to do. You know, got to get here, got to do all this. I mean, it's it's um it's certainly a different experience, but you know, you got to take it in stride, and it's it's part of being the Open champion, and I'm happy to oblige. Number two, please. Uh, Brian, so, sorry, one more random question. Um, you're such a good driver of the ball. When you're looking at uh, a hole from the tee box, like. Where are you deciding where to actually tee off from to like work angles into fairways, you know, based on the wind, based on any other factors? Like, how are you actually picking the location of where you start the hole from on the tee ball? Almost always favor the left side of the tee box. And the best explanation I can have is it's the closest to where the bag gets set down. So I, I don't really have any sort of, str you know, strategic reason why I do the left other than. That's kind of what I've always what I've always done. Just favor I favor the left side of the tee box. Brian. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, um, you spoke there about having that quiet moment when you were out in your little truck. Um, Rory spoke last week about he's not he can't remember the last time he had a proper holiday. It was years yeah. ago. Um, is it difficult being a a global sporting superstar and just you know, going out with your family for a coffee and trying to have a little bit of what we would feel as being normality. Yeah, it's all it's all perspective, right? You you can only experience it through your own experience. I can't imagine being Rory, um, and you know, the, Rory Rory would have trouble going out to eat somewhere. Um, yeah, that, that's that's a part of this gig that that's been that's probably been the hardest adjustment. Uh, is not having enough of your own time, I, I guess you could say, to where you, it's it's hard to escape it sometimes, and that's why I think like my farm and you know being out on the boat and stuff like that are the the places that we crave because it's the place where you get to escape all of it and you just get to be by yourself for a little while. Do we have any? Oh, Doug, yeah, just here. Was there any part of you that that felt like you needed it? act differently as the open champion, either on the golf course or off, off the golf course, just because of what you did and what you 
almost represent with your name on that little jug? I'm just not sure that I would be capable of acting any differently if I wanted to. I, I just... <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm as, I just try and be really honest. I try to be myself, and that way I don't ever have to pretend to be something I'm not. That's just kind of the way I've always done it. Well, Brian, it's been a pleasure having you as our champion. Thank and we you. wish you the best of luck this week. Thanks. Thanks for everyone's Thank time. You.